Good morning, Facebook friends. This is the Wednesday midweek message for Harris Chapel and everybody else who likes to check in on Facebook Live. <laughs> My name is Jim. Today is the 19th of January, 2022. I'm grateful you've decided to give us a slice of your morning. We're going to talk today, and you see behind me that finger, which is one. Our theme for the year is one. Our goal for the year is to understand that in the midst of all the chaos, that there is one, one voice, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one Savior, Jesus, who's overall, in all, and through all, and in Jesus, everything is held together. We're going to continue preaching on that this Sunday. We'll be in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 6 says this, This mystery is that through the gospel the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, members together of one body, and shares together in the promise in Jesus. One body. Jews, Gentiles, rich, poor, red, yellow, black, white, all one under the banner of Jesus. And we'll unpack that more this Sunday. But thank you for checking in. Tonight, we're showing The Chosen here at 6.30 in the chapel. You're welcome to join us, 6.30 in the chapel, to see The Chosen. Also, our youth group is meeting. I've had the time of my life this year walking through the Bible with others at our church. We have about 70, maybe close to 80 of those Bibles that are out now, the Through the Bible in a Year Bible. You're welcome to come by. Jerry and Jody Thomas have made those available. You're welcome to come by the office during the day and just pick up a copy. We'd love to put the word in your hands. You say, Jim, you're already on the 19th of January. What do I do? Well, just start with the 19th of January on our church email address that goes out to our congregation. Each week we give the uh, passages that are happening, but come by and pick up a Bible. Here at Harris Chapel, we're out in the southeast corner of Prairie Creek Reservoir. You're welcome to take it, read it, follow along. It's been great to go through the Bible because it shows me the contrast and yet at the same time the connection between the Old and the New Testament. It shows me how God at work in the Old Testament kind of foreshadows, or we use the word prophecy. He gives us an idea of what's coming in the New Testament. And actually throughout all of this, his hand is at work because he wants us to be one with him. Back in the garden, Adam and Eve literally ate us out of a house and home. That's what John Hagee says. But God, ever since that moment, has been working to restore that relationship between him and his, his creation, us. He's also been looking to restore that relationship with each of us toward one another. Today, I want to give you just one simple word. As I'm out walking with the dog each morning, I love to listen to guys like Tony Evans. I listen to guys like David Jeremiah. I listen to guys like T.D. Jakes. Uh, just a variety of preachers. I need to have my soul nourished. Sometimes I'll even stumble across a guy named Rick Warren and or Charles Stanley. Well, the last couple of days, Tony Evans has been just really digging in, and I don't know if this shows up on the radio or not, but it's been, he's been digging into some sermon material dealing with this idea of the treasure that we have in this earthen vessel. I love that. I want to talk to you about that today. It's over in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. He gives a word picture of the body. The fact is this, the body, your body, my body, outwardly is decaying. It's going through decay. I heard this morning uh, somebody that's going to have double knee surgery coming up in the middle of April. Our bodies are in a state of decay. I've got a tennis elbow thing going on now. I've never played tennis a day in my life. My wife has the same thing in the same arm. It's kind of crazy. I know people that deal with back issues. I know people that deal with diabetic issues and heart issues. I mean, the list is endless as a reminder that these bodies are decaying. Yet today I want to focus on a word that I'm going to give you in just a minute and help you understand that we can look at it from a totally different perspective. If you have a Bible, I'm going to read you a passage from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and then we'll jump back into Psalms for just a moment. But in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7, it says, We have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not for us. The word at the beginning of that verse, though, is this word I want to give you today. But. But. And you'll see this word again and again and again in the next few minutes. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God 
and not from us. He tells them, his readers in 2 Corinthians, Paul says, outwardly, we're wasting away. Outwardly, our bodies are in a state of decay. We're losing hair. Sometimes we're losing hearing, eyesight, all different things that are decaying on the outside. However, Paul says, inwardly, God is continuing to do a work. He says, we're hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. And he goes on, he says, so death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. I want to give you a passage of scripture over in Psalm 3, and then we'll come back to this scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. He says in Psalm 3, and I read to you, this is a psalm of David as he was being pursued by his own son, Absalom. It's crazy. Lord, how many are my foes? How many rise up against me? Many are saying to me, God will not deliver him. But you, Lord, are a shield around me, my glory, the one who lifts my head high. I'm going to read that third verse again. But you, Lord, are a shield around me, my glory, the one who lifts my head high. Here's the problem, folks. And this is the message I want to give you today to give you some hope and some good news. Outwardly, yes, we're decaying. We're falling apart. We're rotting. Blah, blah, blah. We're not meant, our bodies are not meant to exist forever and ever. They don't. I don't care how long a person lives. Our bodies were not designed to live forever. The good news is, Paul says, we're being renewed inwardly. That's the goal. That's the hope. And the reason I give you the word but is I want to talk about this for the next few moments. Your words matter. Your words matter. You can go around and say, you know, I understand that God is good, but man, I've just been going through a lot of problems lately. I understand the Bible is true and the promises of God are real, but man, I'm just not sleeping well. I understand that I need to go to church and I need to read the Bible and I need to listen to good Christian music and hang around good Christian people, but you know, oh, I'm just in a bad place right now. I share this with you. This is what I heard from Tony Evans the other day. Listen carefully, okay? This is the key. Are you ready? This is the key. This is the key. The problem is we put these promises of God, the direction of God, the truth of God, the wisdom of God, we put all that at the front of the sentence and then we say, but, hmm. Whew. Do you hear what David said here in Psalm 3? Let me go back and grab it. It'll take me a minute to get there. But do you hear what he said here in Psalm 3? He said, Lord, how many are my foes? Life is hard. How many rise up against me? They all hate me. Many are saying of me, God will not deliver him. He is in deep doo-doo. <laughs> and then in verse 3, he says, But you, Lord, are a shield around me, my glory, the one who lifts my head high. Here's the teaching for today. This is the midweek message. This is your nugget to take away, okay? Not going to be long today, but I want you to listen to what I'm going to tell you right now. Take this to the bank. Tony Evans said this. I listened and said, hot dog, I got to get this. Here you go. Ready? Instead of saying, I know God's promises are true. I know the Bible says this. I know that God is for me, not against me, but my problems are dot, 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 dot. Tony Evans says this, switch that around. That's what David did in Psalms. He says, you know what? I know my enemies are against me. I know it's tough. My own son Absalom is out to destroy me, but God is going to deliver me. Do you see what I'm saying? Put your problem at the front of the sentence. Absolutely. You got problems. I got problems. All God's children got problems. You want to say that with me? You got problems. I got problems. All God's children got problems. But the Bible is true. You got issues with sciatic nerve? Absolutely. But God is a great physician. You've been feeling sick lately, suffering with the flu, a cold, a sinus infection, COVID, but he's the great physician. You've been feeling lonely, down in the dumps, social distancing has about wrecked your life, but God is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. For every problem we have, for every ache and pain we have, for every excuse we have, there's a but. 
but God, but God, but God is faithful. In fact, my daughter, one of my daughters gave me a devotional book, and that was what it was in time. It was 365 devotions, but it was all built around this theme, God is faithful. That's what I want to give you today. Be careful how you construct your thoughts and your words and your sentences, and make sure that if there is a problem, absolutely recognize the problem. If there is an ache or pain, absolutely confess, oh God, I've got this ache and pain, but... I know you. You are the lifter of my head. You are the one who sticks closer than a brother. You are the one that says you will never leave me or forsake me. You are the one that says you are my shepherd. I shall not want. You lead me in the green pastures. You lead me beside still waters. Even when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. You're with me. You, you just lay out a banquet before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Make sure that your sentences, make sure that your thoughts, make sure that your attitude, make sure that your activities all end where you say, but God, that's the thing that matters more than anything. Time and time again, David found himself in a tight place. People, even his own family who hated him, and wanted to kill him. But God, but thou, O oh Lord, are a shield for me, the glory and the one who lifts my head. You got it yet? You got it yet? Outwardly, outwardly, we're wasting away. Outwardly, we're being knocked down. Outwardly, we're being kicked around. Outwardly, we're being abandoned. But on the inside, we're being renewed. But the creator of the universe is here to help us. All we have to do is call. Make sure that when you construct your sentences today, confess you got a problem, confess you got an ache and pain, but God, that means whatever is in front of that is negated. Whatever is in front of that is done away with because this says what comes after that is what matters the most. Do you understand today? You matter to God. You matter to me. I'm grateful you were just watching this for a few moments. You don't have to be alone. You don't have to be beaten up or kicked around or knocked down because of this. But God, his word is true. His promises are real. Jesus is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. The Holy Spirit is, help, is our helper, our guide, our counselor. Isn't that good news? Don't miss it. Make sure when you construct your sentence, you finish it with a promise of God. You finish it with reminding yourself and reminding him, God is faithful. Thanks for listening. Hope you can be part of watching The Chosen tonight in the chapel at 6.30. Uh, youth are meeting at 6.30. I already shared that. And then join us this Sunday, Ephesians 3, 6. We're going to talk about the fact of in everything, we're one body. That's good news. Hey, let me pray with you. Why don't you pray with me the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I love you. Make it a great Wednesday.